Hello and welcome to the Punchline. I'm your comic strip critic. And last week we took a look at some really, really good comics that I seriously hope you're taking the time to read and enjoy. But this week we need to look at the other side of the equation. For every yin, there must be a yang. For every Oscar award, there must be a Razzie. And for every awesome lesson learned from my five best comics of 2012, there are equally valid lessons to be learned from my five worst comics of 2012. All the same rules that I apply to my best comics still apply to my worst. Only comics I reviewed, only comics that are still running, and only comics that I looked at from a modern timeline. It doesn't feel quite right calling my runner-ups in this category honorable mentions, but dishonorable mentions also sounds kind of weird. So we're creating a brand new category for them today. These are the comics that have won my uh, award. Mary Worth. Slow as frozen molasses on the back of a crippled slug, this self-righteous old lady needs to learn to quicken her pace by about a thousand percent. God bless those who enjoy this, for they clearly have a supernatural level of patience. Hager the Horrible. Nothing says fierce Viking warrior like a deadbeat husband and father who's also a dunce when it comes to pillaging and raiding. Laugh at their hatred of each other and misery in each other's presence and also be creeped out by pervy old men. Yee. So those are the recipients of my brand new... Uh, award. And now that those are all out of the way, let's brace ourselves and get down to business. These are the five worst comics of 2012. Number five, BC. I rambled on about the out-of-time references and nonsensical elements involved in the strip's schizophrenic setting, but I really should have spent more time going over the total lack of characterization. It's particularly criminal in this case because there's a regular cast of characters, but I don't think I could actually name or identify any of them. That's a massive problem right there, and one that could easily be fixed with a few storylines. One commenter told me that not every comic strip needs storylines, and they're right. Storylines wouldn't do well in comics like The Far Side, or... well, actually in any single panel comic. But if you have a multiple panel comic strip and a regular cast of characters, I consider it inexcusable if you don't run some storylines so that we understand the characters better. And let's not get started on the only two women in the strip, whose names are, I cross my heart on this one, Cute chick and fat broad. <sighs> Outstanding work there. Number four. I don't like bad comics and I don't like clumsy political insults. So I really, really don't like Mallard Fillmore. Terrible and inconsistent artwork, shallow political humor with humor in massive quotation marks. It just fails all around as a comic strip. I said that Mallard is run in many papers as a political counterweight to Doonesbury, but it's really not an effective balance. All Mallard does is scream, look how stupid Democrats are, or look how right Republicans are. And that's not how it's done. There's no thought or intelligence put into Mallard's arguments at all. It's like looking at Baby's first political cartoon. It's especially pathetic to watch the poor Baby flail around when his opponent in the ring is practically the Hulk. A proper counterweight to Doonesbury would be much, much better and much, much smarter than this. Look harder, syndicates. There's got to be a conservative cartoonist better than this somewhere out there. Find him and give Mallard the boot. Number three. I actually got into a little argument with someone over my opinion of my fourth worst comic. He told me how much he used to love the comic as a child, which only served to illustrate just how far the born loser has fallen. The characters do nothing but throw mean-spirited insults at each other or stand around in confusion all the time, and there's nothing really likable or interesting about any of them. There's no joy or charm to be found in it. Why would I want to read a strip where nobody ever seems to be enjoying themselves? Nobody's ever happy or content, and I don't think I've ever seen a touching or caring moment between the husband and wife. I don't think I've ever even seen them touch each other. 
I, I meant as in holding hands or hugging or chaste kissing. The only thing memorable about The Born Loser is that it was the first comic I really brought the hammer down on. Number two. My second worst comic of the year is Garfield. Bet that took you by surprise, didn't it? It's not number one on the list. Still doesn't excuse the fat cat's lazy artwork and boring attempts at humor. And I'm only talking about Jim Davis there. The fact that Garfield only exists as a soulless merchandising vehicle that makes hundreds of millions of dollars a year, while much, much better strips struggle to reach an audience, makes me froth at the mouth with barely contained rage. He's not even a character that does anything anymore. He's an intellectual property whose only job is to exist without offending anyone so that more plushies can be sold. What? charm, what likability, what relatability is there in a character whose entire personality can be summed up with two of the seven deadly sins? Slather yourself in barbecue sauce and go play in a hungry crocodile pit, you lazy, fat, cynical, money-grubbing, talentless, soulless, sellout blob. I'll be watching and cheering on the crocs. Number one. You know... Even I was kind of surprised when I realized that a comic managed to be worse than Garfield this year. Especially when it was a comic that I didn't really like or hate before I got around to reviewing it. It just sort of existed in my sphere of comics that I knew because my paper ran it. But man, it, it, it truly deserves every ounce of scorn I can muster from the bottom of my heart. So... My number one worst comic of the year goes to Tom Baddock and Funky Wingerbean. Congratulations, guys. I earned a whole new level of disrespect for you this year. If you ever want to earn my respect again, then pull your head out from up your butt and don't insult your audience, you pompous, pretentious, stuck-up idiot. What were you thinking? I don't know why all these people hate my comics so much. Maybe if I spend a week boring them with a history lesson and then insult them for what they like, they'll change their mind and see how much of a genius I am. You are literally biting the hand that feeds you with this panel. What was the point you were trying to make? We're wrong and you're right and we should just shut up and bask in your wisdom and glory? You're not going to convince anyone that you're right this way, Tom. You're just going to make us even angrier at you for what you do and it seems entirely justifiable this time. You are literally attacking our intelligence and lording it over us because you feel better than we are. Now you've tainted the way I read your entire body of work. I can never look at another Funky Winker Bean or Crankshaft comic strip the same way again knowing that this is what you think of the average comic strip reader. I hope that earning my worst comic strip of 2012 award was worth it. Because if I ever meet you in real life, the very first thing I'm going to do is shove a rabid ferret down the front of your pants. I'm your comic strip critic, and I read the funny pages in the hope that someday we get rid of the garbage like this stuff. <laughs>